Welcome to Module 4, Post Implant Placement. Chapter 1, Complications of Dental Implants. At the end of this chapter, you will learn the success and survival rates of dental implants and understand the complications associated with them. Dental implants have proven to be the most promising and fastest growing technology in the past 30 years. Cross-sectional studies have shown implant treatment to be highly reliable and safe in suitably selected patients. According to the Association of Dental Implantology in 2012, the implant survival rate is the number of implants in place over the number of dental implants that were placed. In other words, as long as they are still in place, they are considered to be surviving. On the other hand, the implant success rate is described when an implant is present at the time of review and fulfills certain pre-established criteria such as absence of pain, radiolucency, bone loss, peri-implant pocketing and others. The following table highlights the results of a study done by Tejason in 2007. The 10-year survival rate for implant processes was 77.8% for both bridges and tooth implant supported bridges and 89.4% for single crowns. On the other hand, the survival rate for conventional processes over the same time period was 89.2% for bridges and 80.3% for cantilever bridges. This is the latest systematic review regarding the evaluation of survival and success rates of dental implants. It was done by Morashini et al. in 2014. According to the study, the implant survival rate had a cumulative mean value of 94.6% with variation from 73.4% to 100%. The implant success rate ranged between 34.9% to 100%. Osseointegrated implants are safe and present high survival rates and minimal marginal bone resorption in the long term. Nowadays, the dental implant procedure has become more popular among dentists and patients. Despite high success rates, several risk factors and complications have been published in various clinical reports. These complications may be biological, mechanical, and aesthetics or phonetics. Reviewing the patient's medical and dental records is needed so that the dental implant complications can be anticipated before treatment planning and execution and therefore minimized. The first category is biological complications. These include peri-implant diseases, bone loss, gingival and soft tissue overgrowth and fistulae. Peri-implant disease is a collective term for inflammatory reactions in the tissues surrounding an implant. Peri-implant mucositis is the presence of inflammation in the mucosa at an implant with no signs of loss of supporting bone. Peri-implantitis is an inflammatory process additionally characterized by peri-implant bone loss. Here are clinical photos to explain peri-implant diseases. The first is a peri-implant mucositis associated with implant-retained crown of the upper right one. The second photo is retained cement associated with implant crowns of the upper left one and upper left two. The third photo shows peri-implantitis of upper left one and upper left two following mucoperiosteal flap elevation. These are the diagnostic differences between peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis. Peri-implant mucositis is always accompanied by bleeding on probing and sometimes with increased probing depth and suppuration. Mobility and radiographic bone loss is not seen with peri-implant mucositis. On the other hand, peri-implantitis always presents with increased probing depth, bleeding on probing, suppuration and radiographic bone loss. Mobility may be present or absent. The features of peri-implantitis include radiological evidence for vertical destruction of the crestal bone, saucer-shaped defects, formation of a peri-implant pocket, bleeding and separation on probing, pain and swelling of the peri-implant tissues and hyperplasia. This slide and the next one will show you more clinical photos to explain peri-implantitis.
Another example of biological complication is bone loss. The level of the crestal bone is a significant marker for implant health and stability. Bone loss may occur secondary to excessive occlusive loading or bacteria. After the dental implant surgery, some amount of bone loss occurs during the phase of tissue healing and osteointegration. To avoid bone loss, occlusive loading should be within the physiological limits of the bone and adverse occlusive forces should be minimized. Soft tissue or gingival overgrowth is one of the examples of a biological complication. An incident rate of 15-20% to 20 has been reported in a 9-year follow-up study. It may occur due to poor oral hygiene and plaque accumulation around the dental implants. Other causes include medication, reduced width of the attached gingiva, poor fit of the framework, and dead space beneath the framework. Treatment of the soft tissue overgrowth includes removal of the underlying cause and oral prophylaxis. The next biological complication is the fistulae. Only 1-2% of cases have been reported at the interface between the dental implant and the abutment. Fistulae are more common in cement-retained implant restorations. Its predisposing factors include loosening of the abutment screw and poor fit of the framework and processes. Fistulae should be treated with 0.2% chloroxidine gluconate solution. An adequate amount of torque should be applied while placing the processes. The second category of dental implant complications is mechanical complications. The commonly reported mechanical complications associated with implant-supported fixed processes include fracture of the veneer material or framework, loss of retention, screw loosening, screw fracture, and implant fracture. The incidence of these complications associated with implant-retained single crowns and implant-retained fixed partial dentures with or without cantilever extensions after 5 years is presented in this table. These are some clinical photos of the previously mentioned mechanical complications. Another complication of dental implant is aesthetic complications. Aesthetic complications detract from the overall appearance of the implant-supported prosthesis. Missing interdental papillae, mucosal recession, poor restoration contour and shade mismatch may all cause aesthetic failure. Aesthetic results of the dental implants cannot be predicted. Henry et al. reported a 10% incidence rate of aesthetic implant complications in a 5-year study. Several restorative and anatomical factors can cause these complications in dental implant treatment. Some of the common complications reported include poor restoration contour and shade mismatch, missing interdental papillae, mucosal recession, and malpost implant. Aesthetic implant complications can be minimized by the proper treatment plan. The final restoration should be used as a guide for three-dimensional positioning of the dental implant which can be regarded as the key for aesthetics. The outcome of the treatment is more appreciated by the patient compared to the dentist. Hence, the patients should be informed about the limitations of aesthetics results. Surgical guides should be used for location and angulation of the dental implants. Good design of the implant is also needed. These are our list of references. Thank you for listening and see you in Chapter 2.